in. <clears throat> well, tonight I'm going to be ministering about America. About America. And I'm going to be showing you many prophecies in the Word of God concerning America. Now, you've probably looked through the Word of God on many different occasions and, and probably trying to find the USA or United States of America or, or, or what have you, and you've never found it. <clears throat> or perhaps you may have run into it a little bit. But we're going to be getting here very shortly on about America, and I think you're going to be quite enlightened tonight uh, on not only about America, but it shows you exactly where we are at today. It's like reading the newspaper. It's absolutely incredible. First of all, I want to explain to you that I don't think I need to tell you this, but America today is laden with sin. It's laden with sin, with its drunkenness, drug addiction, tobacco, prostitution, homosexuality, smut peddlers, immorality, abortion of these little babies, mercy killings going on, uh, murders, robbers, and looters. I just recently read a little report from the Justice Department uh, that the juvenile court cases in America just, just came out involving serious crimes uh, have risen 68% uh, from 1988 through 1992 in just a period of four years. Aggravated assaults increased 80%. Homicides increased 55%. Robberies 52% and forcible rapes 27%. America today is reaping a whirlwind of chaos and violence. And the Word of God is going to show us uh, this this evening. Quite frankly, what we're seeing amongst us is the loosing of demons. We're seeing a loosing of demons that uh, is destroying America's family and our society as a whole. America is fast becoming a habitation of devils. It is fast becoming a habitation of devils and a hold on every evil spirit imaginable. And you better believe it. Hallelujah. Is America found in the prophecies of the Word of God concerning the last days? You better believe it. It sure is. It sure is. You know, Jesus said himself in Luke 21, 28, he says, and when these things begin to come to pass, and if you notice, he said, when they begin to come to pass, not when they come to pass, but when they begin to come to pass, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Well, my dear people, Jesus Christ is coming, and I'm cut, he's coming soon, and I'm here to declare that tonight, that he's coming, and he's coming soon. And it's time for the church of Jesus Christ, his bride, to wake up and get ready to receive it. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Well, <clears throat> America is identified, if you're taking notes, as modern-day Babylon in Revelation chapter 18, which I'm going to show you here. It's also identified in Jeremiah 50 and 51. America is also included in the judgments upon all nations in Ezekiel 39, verse 21. A lot of people get confused about Babylon, but what it boils down to is there are three Babylons in the Word of God. There's three. There's ancient Babylon, which was uh, built by Nimrod in Genesis 10, verse 10. And also, of course, we've, I've talked about in Daniel chapter 2, when King Nebuchadnezzar. And the second Babylon is Mystery Babylon, which talks about in Revelation chapter 17. And then we have Political Babylon, which is Revelation 18 and Jeremiah 50 and 51. You see, my dear people, the Word of God gives us conclusive evidence uh, that a modern-day Babylon far different and superior to ancient Babylon will be in existence in the latter days. How many of you know that we are in the latter days? My dear people, we are in the very last of the latter days. We are in the very last of the latter days. So I want to emphasize that because Jesus is coming and he's coming soon. Now if you would turn with me please to the book of Revelation and chapter 18. Of course, we have the prophet, uh, uh, sorry, prophet, I mean, um, apostle, John. And he's writing this down. He says, and after these sayings, verse 1, after these sayings, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Well, before I begin here, in Revelation 18, we witness the destruction of what the Bible calls political or commercial Babylon. In chapter 17 of the book of Revelation, it actually exposes religious Babylon or the harlot church. 
chapter 18 shows us political or commercial Babylon. And the reason I'm separating these two is because there are two Babylons in the book of Revelation and I'm showing you what the difference is between the two right here. Again, religious Babylon was called mystery Babylon. You may say it right in the heading in your Bible. Political Babylon is referred to as Babylon the Great. Religious Babylon was presented as a mother or a woman. Political Babylon is portrayed as a city, a great city, a mighty city, and eventually a burning city. Religious Babylon was destroyed by the kings of the earth. Political Babylon will be destroyed by horrendous judgments from the wrath of God. When religious Babylon was destroyed, the kings, or, or in other words, the leaders of the earth rejoiced. When political Babylon is demolished, the kings and merchants of the earth begin to weep for her. So what we've done here is we've separated the two Babylons in the book of Revelation to help clarify it for you. Okay, now Revelation 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Well, we have the Apostle John writing this down, and he says, after these things, after what things? After the fulfillment of religious Babylon's destruction in Revelation 17, which was the harlot church of the last days. Again, that gives us proof that our two Babylons are different and distinctive of one another. Because it's very important that you separate them. We had religious Babylon and we have political or commercial Babylon. Verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So we see here that God's judgment of commercial Babylon has begun. The angel's cry is, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Now my dear people, it's talking about America as you'll see here. America is Babylon the great. The angel's cry is, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Why? She has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every evil spirit imaginable. Does that sound familiar? She has become the habitation of devils. She is a cage containing every vicious, filthy, and hateful bird in existence. And as we will see this through Scripture, America presently fits the description of of political Babylon as the cage containing every unclean and hateful bird that is controlled by spirits and demons. You're really going to have an eye opener tonight. You're really going to open your eyes. Jesus is coming, amen? Thank God for that. Now you say, well, what do I mean by controlled by spirits and demons and it's a hold of every vicious and, uh, um, spirit and demon? To give you an example, two years ago <coughs> in San Francisco, they had a parade of homosexuals, lesbians, and pedophiles. Now, at this parade, there was 400,000 American citizens watching this parade as the homosexuals paraded, paraded by, as the lesbians paraded by, very um, vulgar, okay? The pedophiles literally had children walking in front of them with a leash and a collar around the child's neck. As 400,000 Americans watched this, this is in San Francisco two years ago. Now, does that sound like Sodom and Gomorrah to you? You better believe it. You better believe it. You see, today, if we were to take a walk through New York City, Detroit, Chicago, Los Angeles, Hollywood, or San Francisco, it would shock most people. America's major cities are loaded with lust-ridden sinners, prostitution, X-rated movies, pornography. You find it right here in Dallas. Right here in Dallas you find it. 
In other words, it is a cage containing every unclean and hateful bird. In other words, it's a nation containing every unclean and hateful bird. It's controlled by foul spirits and demons. You say, well, why? Why is this going on? Because we're a Christian nation. How many of you know that we are a Christian nation? Well, my dear people, when Christianity flourishes, so does the devil. Why? Because he comes in to kill, to steal, and to destroy the blessings of God. Now let's look at verse 3. For all nations, you see that double A, L, double L, not nations, have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Well, if you notice there in verse 3, just like religious Babylon, this political system will turn to idolatry and spiritual fornication. And what do I mean by that? In other words, it will fall from within, just like the Roman Empire, because of its sin. It will literally cave in from the inside. Fornication here refers to the worship of strange gods. You know, people can make a god out of anything. Is that true? And a love of this world's material goods. You see, my dear people, we as Americans don't realize how materialistic we've gotten. We really don't. You know, I didn't know it until I left this country. I didn't. I didn't. But do you realize what materialism is? It's self-worship. It's say, looky here, I'm going to buy something and reward me. Isn't that true? So what is materialism? It's self-worship. It's self-worship. Hallelujah. Then it's, it's, the Word of God says, The nations of the earth have partaken of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed spiritual fornication with her. In other words, for material gain. What does it mean? The nations of the earth have partaken of the wine of the wrath? Well, my dear people, if you go outside of this country, a lot of people don't realize this, but virtually all television and throughout the world is American. Did you know that? If you went to Europe today, the shows you see are the very same shows we see here. They've just dubbed in their accents. I mean their, their language. So what we've actually done as American at Hollywood and so forth and the soap operas have transported, if you like, by satellite to all these other nations uh, all this violence and, and, and lust uh, and uh, so forth that comes through the TV. And my dear people, I don't have to tell any, any of us as a born-again, spirit-filled Christian, there's not much on that TV you can watch. Well, what are we doing? We are exporting it. See? And that's what that talks about there when it talks about the wine of the wrath of our fornication. You see, my dear people, the merchants of the earth have become exceedingly wealthy through the abundance of riches. In other words, through America's prosperity. If you notice there, it said the, the uh, merchants of the earth. How? Through commerce and business throughout the world. To pinpoint that for you even closer, uh, if you notice, uh, when you turn on the news, uh, it talks about trade imbalances. Trade imbalances, for instance. Last month, it was like $10.2 billion, just this last month. Uh, in other words, uh, the merchants of the earth uh, are getting rich and wealthy off of America's prosperity. Through imports. Can you see that? You, think, you don't think the Word of God doesn't tie in? You better believe it. In verse 4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not to her plagues. Well, what does that mean, come out of her, my people? Well, first of all, you must remember that the church of Jesus Christ has already been raptured. It was raptured, if you remember those who have been here, in chapter 4, verse 1, it was the rapture of the church of the book of Revelation. Okay. So what's it saying here? It's saying, come out of her, my people, in verse 4. Well, the Word of God here is talking to the Jewish people. It's talking to the Jewish people. Anytime the Lord talks about my people in the Word of God, he's talking about the Jew or his elect. Okay? And he's saying, come out of her, my people. 
Well, how many of you know there are actually more Jews in America than there are in Israel? Did you know that? There's more, matter of fact, there's more Jews in New York than there is in Israel. And that's what he's talking about there. The Word of God says, come out of her, my people. Why? Because of the sin. You see, America has become a habitation of devils. Now, when the Lord speaks this, the Lord showed me this, when he says, come out of her, my people, what you're seeing there actually is another rapture of the tribulation saints, which are Messianic Jews. Because please remember that the church has already, the church of Jesus Christ has already been raptured. There's seven raptures throughout the book of Revelation. Okay? All right, now. So God's saying, come out of her, my people. Why? Because of sin. Okay, now, to enlighten you just a little bit on that, if you turn with me to Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52, beginning with verse 8. Isaiah 52, beginning with verse 8. Everybody got it? Amen. Okay, we're going to be reading verses 8 through 11. Thy watchman. How many of you know what a watchman is? It's a seer. It's who sets up on the city walls, if you like, and sees trouble. Okay. Thy watchman shall lift up the voice... Uh, and with the voice together shall they sing for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring ag again Zion so the watchman here is talking about the last days break forth into joy sing together ye waste places of Jerusalem for the Lord hath comforted his people you see that there the Lord has comforted his people he's talking about Israel the Jew he hath redeemed Jerusalem how many of you know what it means to be redeemed Okay, there's where he's redeemed the Jew, if you like, in Revelation 18, verse 4, we just read. Verse 10. And see, well, how can you tell this is the last days? Because it's speaking of judgment right here. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm. That speaks of judgment. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Again, speaking about judgment. Verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing, go ye out from the midst of her. There ye are. Go ye out from the midst of her, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. So why does the Lord say go out in the midst of her? For her sins if, you'll net those, if we go back to verse 5 in Revelation, it's because of her sin. America's sin has reached all the way up to heaven. Back to Revelation verse, chapter 18, verse 5. And we read, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. My dear people, Jesus is coming, and he's coming soon. We must remember that in Revelation 18 that God is dealing with Israel you see God is dealing with Israel the last half or 30 and a half years or 42 months to, which is due to with Israel the Jews of the tribulation hour those who trusted in the shed blood of Jesus Christ are told to come out of here and not partake of her evil deeds and of course I believe that's the raptures and tribulation saints okay my dear people God does not think lightly of sin he does not think lightly of sin. Sin in the New Testament is just the same as sin was in the Old Testament. How many of you know that? You know, we have taken the, the message of grace, and don't get me wrong, we are under grace, but we've taken it so far, we think that there's no such thing as sin anymore. But sin in the New Testament is no different than sin in the Old Testament, and God doesn't think any different about it. Okay? You better believe it. Okay. Now let's keep going on here. Uh, verse 5 says, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Well, we read in 1 Peter 1.15, we won't turn to it, but the Lord says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. In other words, the words of our mouth. And the Lord reinforces, re reinforces that in, in, in verse 16 of 1 Peter 1, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. 
Now let's look at verses 6 and 7 in, in Revelation 18. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and I am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Well, here we see double judgment. And my dear people, this is double judgment that's coming upon America. What we're seeing is we're seeing God's law of sowing and reaping coming into effect. How many of you know that we reap what we sow? In other words, if you go out here and you put your hand in a fire, you're going to get burned. Or if a homosexual man lays down with another man, they're going to get AIDS maybe. In other words, they're going to reap what was sow. Okay? Okay. That's the reason why Job says in 4.8, They that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Man cannot get away with sin forever, and God hates sin, and it is inconsistent with his holiness because God is holy. God will not tolerate sin forever, and the reaping of political Babylon's sin must finally take place. You say, why am I talking about all this sin? Because this country is full of it, people. It's, it's full of it. <clears throat> So what is verse 6 saying? It's talking about double the judgment. Double the judgment. Why? Well, because according to her works, America has been blessed above all nations and has turned around and blessed herself. Isn't it true? She's been blessed above all nations. My dear people, if you go out of this country, they're not blessed like this one. You better believe it. They are not blessed like this one. <clears throat> and so, because America has been blessed above all nations, uh, she has continually turned around and blessed herself. In other words, in verse 7, if you notice what it said there, she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. She has glorified herself uh, and lived deliciously. In other words, uh, uh, America has glorified herself instead of God. How many of you know that God wants the glory? God wants the glory. So her wealthy, her uh, become wealthier and her poor become poorer. Isn't it true? That's what's going on. America has given herself for God's creativity. In other words, uh, America says, well, look at me, I, and gives herself the credit for the creativity of the things that's been created in this nation. Now, how many of you know, the more God a country has, the more the creativity, because it has more of the creator. It's true. You go to a country that has very few uh, Christian population and they don't, they don't uh, have any creativity. They don't produce a car or they don't produce this or they don't produce that. They just don't have that creativity in them. Why? Because God is not in their nation. That's the reason why the word says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Amen? Well, thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Hallelujah. If you notice in verse 7, she's, the word of God says... Uh, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, which is pride, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow, no repentance. So America's sitting there, and she's saying in her heart, I sit a queen. Hey, I'm a queen. I'm not no widow. I'm not poor. Look at me. And he's saying, and shall see no sorrow. There's no repentance in it, in America. So what happens, verse 8, 8 tells us, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Hallelujah. Verse 9. I know it's, uh, and it, verse 9 says, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, what might, might, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Well, what do those three verses there tell us? Well, in verse 8 it tells us, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, because she hasn't repented of her pride. Well, what, happen, what can happen in one day? mourning and famine. And it says, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. What can happen in one day that could cause that? 
Then the word of God goes on and says, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when she shall say, See the smoke of her burning? What could cause her to burn? And verse 10 says, A standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. What could happen in one hour that could destroy a nation? A nuclear holocaust, my dear people. A nuclear holocaust upon America for her sin. In one day, burned with fire. Smoke of her burning, for in one hour is thy judgment come. You say, well, yes, but the world's been disarmed. Well, <clears throat> that's true to a point. How many of you know that Russia is still producing weapons? How many of you know, you may not know this, but last week, that not only America, but Russia are both on nuclear alert? Are you aware of that? It's true. It's true. It's all politics, my dear people. Don't believe what you read in the paper. Believe what you read in the Bible. You better believe it. You better believe it. Then again, <coughs> we have many, many missiles right in this country sitting in silos. How do you know some madman's not going to get a hold of the button? Isn't it true? True. Well, we don't know how this is going to happen, but it's going to happen. How do you know that? Because that's what the Word of God says. That's what the Word of God says. You better believe it. Hallelujah. Where am I at? Verse uh, uh, 8. 11, I'm sorry. And the merchants of the earth <coughs> shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Well, who's the merchants of the earth? Those are the people that import goods into this country. They shall weep and mourn over her. Why? For no man buyeth, if you notice this, their merchandise anymore. See? No man buyeth their merchandise anymore. All right? Now, how many of you know that the Bible is just like the newspaper? I mean, just like the newspaper, if you pick it up and read it and really study it. I'm going to show you what I mean here. The Bible here actually, beginning with verse 12, of Revelation 18 tells us what's in the stores that the people have been buying. <laughs> True. I'm going to read to you. Beginning with verse 12. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors.